As I said earlier, through the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which I might add, I wrote the original one with my own Paul. I wrote it, sat down and wrote it. It's horrific what this company's done to their shareholders. I weep like a baby for them. I wouldn't touch this stock. However, <laughs> if, Elon, I, I, if, he, if, if Elon Musk gave me a piece of the deal, if he took it over on the debt stack or the equity, I back him because of executional performance on everything he touches. The rest of this board and those employees have done a horrifically bad job. I think they should be fired. Pakistan should not, and Afghanistan should be people. Should be oh, the Asian president, Asian Mr. President. Yeah. <laughs> the president has promised to slash greenhouse gas emissions in half by 2030. Um, now you're having to expand production of fossil fuels and you promised to curtail them. Congress, as we know, has... And these leases are not in line with our policy or the president's view. Um, but whether your, you know, policy or not, I mean, this is the, the situation that you're in. It is, and we're going to continue. There's, there's obviously, we're going to continue to fight uh, this legal action. Um, we'll continue to fight for. Uh, one of the reasons that this was so troubling uh, to him is because he is so committed to uh, that um, that uh, objective uh, as president, that we will continue to work with Congress to take actions, but he has also not hesitated to take actions himself through his own uh, uh, authorities uh, to take actions to help our climate. So, but are you still confident that goal is achievable? We are continuing to pursue it, and we are going to continue to do everything we can to reach it. We're also not going to teach that virtues such as merit, excellence, hard work, fairness, neutrality, objectivity, and colorblindness are somehow racist or sexist. They are not. Everybody can succeed. Everybody works hard. Everybody deserves fairness. And so we're going to stand by that. The bill that we're signing is called the Stop Woke Act. And the reason what it stands for, woke, is Stop Wrongs Against Our Kids and Employees Act. Because unfortunately, you've seen employees, mostly working for major Fortune 500 companies, that get subjected to this same type of ideology in the guise of workforce training. Coca-Cola, for example, had their employees uh, be urged to be, quote, less white as part of the company's diversity training. Google employee program claims that America is a system of white supremacy and that all Americans are, quote, raised to be racist. Walt Disney Corporation, of course, claimed that <laughs> Walt Disney Corporation claimed that America was founded on, quote, systemic racism and encouraged employees to complete a, quote, white privilege checklist. Under this law, that is a violation of your civil rights. Saying that because she voted for this, she didn't want people to learn about George Washington. And I'm thinking to myself, like, first of all, that's not in here, but if our kids learn nothing but George Washington's character, they could do a lot worse for an education. I mean, I'm just telling you. But we will have to take action. You know, some people say, don't get involved in this. And what are we supposed to do? Just let these ideologies overtake our entire education system? We're not going to do that. We are going to fight for what's right, and we are going to make sure that everybody's got a fair shot to realize their, the, their dreams and make the most of their God-given talent. China has not condemned Russia. They appear to be buying Russian coal, Russian energy. Why are we not? putting sanctions on China. And they're continuing to buy coal and oil um, isn't a, a violation, isn't a way of attempting to evade our sanctions. We would like to see China uh, use their relationship with Russia. Why aren't they doing that? To help bring this to an end. I have not seen China um, really undermine the impact of our sanctions. And By the way, I made it clear to my friends up in uh, Nantucket in that area, I don't want to hear any more about you don't like looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty. But seriously, it's incredible the breakthroughs that are making. Once you tell a nation that we can do this, go do it. It's amazing what happens. Thanks to Ron Wyden and Jeff Merkley and, and Earl Bum and Earl, excuse me, I know. You can call me Bidden. Joe Bidden. Helping deliver a more unemployment nationwide is at 3.6%, down from 6.4% when I took office 19 months ago. President, I'm Title 42, sir. Are you considering delaying lifting Title 42? No, what I'm considering is continuing to hear from my 
uh, my uh, well, first of all, there's going to be an appeal by the Justice Department because as a matter of principle, we want to be able to be in a position where if, in fact, it is strongly concluded by the scientists that we need Title 42, that we be able to do that. But there has been no decision on extending Title 42. So thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to take just one or two questions. I got Why has President Biden been so sheltered from the press? In what way? He just did a press conference a couple, several weeks ago. Well, I he, was, does, he takes questions from the press nearly every day. I'll take a look at this. In his first year, Mr. Biden sat down for 28 interviews with reporters. That compares to 95 in the same period of time for Donald Trump and 162 for Barack Obama. By comparison, Jen, that's sheltered. Well, the statistic you didn't include there, Chris, is how many times did he take questions from reporters at the White House? I think it was about no, he's had double two so the two number. solo news conferences. No, no, beyond that. I mean, nearly every day at the White House, he takes questions from the White House press corps. Yeah, but Jen. Two questions, three questions, eight questions. Yeah, but Jen, I, but, I, but why I mean, is that I, different? Well, he's done I'll, that I'll tell you exactly two or three why. times more than his predecessors. I'll tell you exactly why that's different, because oftentimes he gives a partial answer and walks away. It in no way compares to sitting down with a reporter for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and having, uh, you can't move away. You can't duck it. you got to sit there and answer the question and the follow-up. It's not the same thing. Uh, we can agree to disagree on that, Chris.